main point of today's video has absolutely nothing to do with these or anything I've just shown you. I just thought I'd try a different kind of intro. Uh, I hope you liked it. I hope it looked good. Obviously, I don't know yet because I haven't looked at it because I don't edit my videos until after I've uh, completed filming. Anyway, um, back on with the main portion of today's video. So, the main point of today's video is about goals and how you achieve those goals and what you can do with those goals. I'm not talking about this kind of goal. Haha. <laughs> I'm talking about the kind of goal where you set yourself something to work towards, something that you can manageably do over the next week, month, year, five years. Um, I think it's really important that everybody sets goals for themselves. If you don't set goals, you'll find yourself going nowhere in life and that's why to me it is important. So I am going to basically redo my goals because I haven't done them in a while, I haven't done them in about six months, so I want to see what I can achieve within the next six months. But first, I've got to upload a video, so let's do that. So, welcome, oh, I'm Charles from the future. Basically what's happened here is we are doing goals. I didn't realize I wasn't recording. There are two types of goals here, long-term and short-term. Long-term goals should be between six months and a year, two years maybe. And then you've got your short-term goals, which should be between two days or a day, whatever you want, up to about six months. Um, basically, short-term goals are easier to work on than long-term goals. So, with that in mind, we are going to have a look at my old goals. My old goals were mainly based around my work. One of my short-term goals was to exercise more, which as you will see later, I have succeeded with in my opinion. I wanted to get another couple of gigs at some places and another place contracting. One of the some of the long-term goals were to get some more contracting work, which I have. <clears throat> so now I'm setting up my long-term and short-term goals for the next six months. Uh, some long-term goals are learning to drive because I'll be able to do that in four months. Uh, by 21, I'll be living or have lived in a van and travelled. So I want to get more sound in PA, but obviously so I can grow myself, get better at what I want to do. And I want to gain another contracting position again, just so I can spread my experience base around. Some shorter term goals now. Um, purchase a kayak and I, I had to have a plan to do some long kayak journeys that I really wanted to do for a while. I want to improve my video editing skills which I'm doing now having spent the last four hours editing this video because things didn't go quite to plan but that doesn't matter. I want to run, run a 10k, uh, a race 10k in under 50 minutes and I don't know because I need to just measure that. I want to raise some money for charity, preferably more than 100 quid because that's a bit lame, but you know, we'll see where we can get with that one. Yo, so it's been a bit of a time hop, a bit of a jump cut, but the weather is stopped raining and I'm going to go for a run because I want to get out of this house. I don't like staying large amounts of time inside, so um, I, I, I can't go running like this. Um, I think I can get. One of the things that I absolutely adore about running, especially the kind of little speedy places like this and off the road, is it's just you. You are the only person for miles around. And it sort of just feels better that way.
I mean, heck, if I was timing this video, would I have, if I was timing this run, would I have had time to come up here and see this on all the way around there? Beautiful views of the place I live. And if you spend your life constantly jug into something that's timing you or judging you, you lose that passion with what's around you. And I think that's what's attracted me to the outdoors my entire life. It's the fact that there is so much to explore and at no point do you need anything remotely technical to get there or do that. And I think if a lot more people took notice of this, the world would be a far better place. There wouldn't be as many keyboard warriors. There'd be people out there enjoying what they're doing, living life to the maximum. And that's what runs like this make, make my week all the time, every time. So, I'll come and sit down. We're about two kilometers from the last time I caught up with you. 2K further on, found a lake. Nice little lake. Um, I saw this from the hill, which is just out of view over that way, over that way somewhere. And again, it proves my point. If I was timing my run and calculating how far I'd gone, not just guessing, so I guess 2K, I've got my phone, but I don't use my phone in case I get stuck or something, God forbid. Um, but if I was filming my run, I wouldn't, if I was, if I was timing my run, I wouldn't, wouldn't have time to stop off here. Wouldn't have time to admire it and just take nature in, because nature is the most powerful thing on the planet, in my opinion. And having the ability to come and be one with nature, as it were, it's incredible. And... I wouldn't change it for the world. It's the one thing I fear most is losing my freedom. And so having the ability to come out and do runs every every other day, possibly four or five times a week, it's incredible. And I wouldn't change it for the world of me. I don't care how rich I get, if I get rich, which I probably won't. But I don't care how rich I get, how much money I earn, nature and the world around me will always be my number one goal to be at one with. If you respect nature, nature respects you. And I think that's a quote that every person, no matter if you don't spend time outside, doing sports, running, hiking, cycling, whatever you do, heck, even if you stay inside, if you just go with the um, with the saying of if you respect nature, na if you respect nature, nature respects you. Your life will be so much better. You'll get so much more out of everyday life. Now, when running in places like this, if you get to somewhere like I am now, there's two directions. One's down a tarmac road, one's down a slightly steep embankment with a load of mud at the bottom of it. I think I know which one I'm going for. So, we're here. Beautiful little creek. I'd love to follow this down, but it's not looking too good that way. It's quite, quite branchful. Just gonna dip over it, continue on my other run home. Right, so we are on the return journey now. Um, I don't like running back one way and then straight back the other, so I tend to mix it up and find some routes. Obviously, off road is what I prefer. But, uh, it's been a good one. I am aware my camera is about to die. So, I will meet you back home, which is about click, click and a half that way. So, yes. <clears throat> so having now shown you all of that, what I've shown you it for is because I've learned very recently that I'm not motivated by numbers when I'm running. I don't like running to a time. I don't like running to a distance. I don't like running to what somebody else expects me to be like. I don't like comparing myself that way through a sport to someone else. I do it because I enjoy it. And as I've actually got a quote here, this quote from this guy, Bo Miles, he's a YouTube, he YouTube, but he does filmmaking, he's an outdoor educator. He does a lot of incredible things. I'm not bothered about how far I run 
or how long it takes. I measure my run by what I have seen. That's a brilliant quote that I've sort of started going to now. And the other one, I don't want to have to do anything to say I have done it. I want to do it because I love it. And I think if everyone lives by those two quotes, you will honestly appreciate what you're doing a whole lot more. You'll feel a lot mo more motivated to do things, a lot more motivated to get out there, a lot more motivated to push yourself to try and find and seek new adventures. And life is basically a book. And those who don't travel, try new things, explore, bend rules, only read one page of it, and what's the point in reading one page of a book? So on that slightly more serious note, uh, which I don't like doing, I'm going to end today's video here. I'm going to thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe because like something like 3% or 6% of my s viewers aren't subscribed to the channel. So subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and share the video if you want. If you, it's in, motivated you, enjoyed you, it, or you've enjoyed watching, or I'm just a bit of an idiot that's turned up on your screen. Either one, just share, like, subscribe, and I will see you on Wednesday and then on Sunday for another vlog. Thank you and good night.